So I have a different use case. So um, mm-hmm. one thing that I have, so I have a smart lock in my home and it allows me to push custom user access codes. So for example, yeah. um, if the cleaner is coming over or um, in-laws coming over, I can have a different code um, that yeah. is unique to them and they can punch it in. But then I can disable it, you know, so it's after sunset or out of working hours, you know, those people can't access the front door. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the problem I have with that is that I need to tell, so for me to push over that pin code, let's say it's 1234, Home needs to make a service call over Z-Wave to the door lock and say uh, user slot 1 has code 1234. Yeah. Now, the problem I have there is I need Home Assistant to be able to keep those access codes in a variable somewhere, and I've been using input numbers for that. Now, from a security point of view, anyone yeah. that can access my developer tools um, can then see the access code in the developer tools as yeah. just an entity, right? So it's on my default love-based dashboard. There's an entity, uh, cleaner access code, 1234. Um, yeah. Now I can create a script that says... Um, return me what the cleaner's access code is um, and that will return from the service call. Um, still not as secure, you know, yes, if you know what you're doing, you could access the data, but it does mean I don't need an entity dedicated to just the access code for this person. Um, and now I can have, I can leverage, uh, I'm guessing I can leverage secrets to do this as well. So um, yep. you might, script, I can then leverage a secret, um, which I could previously do with the variables and all that, it got messy. Um, but I think this is, yeah, just a, a very cool way to be able to, yeah, go in um, and return things to automations. Another cool thing is um, just being able to create like consistency um, around the places. So if you want a script that uh, is like a global way for the house to know, right, the lights need to be dimmed at this level because it's this time of the evening. Previously, you would I would have to copy over like uh, templates to the same automations, put them in variables and all that. It, got, it gets messy. Now I could just have a script. What is the percentage for the lights meant to be? And it calculates yeah. it on the fly. Um, so there, there are a couple of ideas I've been toying with. I don't know, Ryan, if there's anything in, in your home that you would find a use case for being able to return data instead of having to cache it somewhere. I mean, it's I think I think more just from a state perspective i'd love to see you know what if a service happens i'd love to see like again for for devices that support it right a proper in band if you want to call it like that like a like a return saying like hey you know this is like yep we verified the service and it's good right like yep. whatever that is um and i know some stuff does it today right like but it it can be a more generic doesn't matter where, like kind of wider spread kind of uh, piece there. But I think that is, I, I I don't have as big of a use case. I do want to try playing with, again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm at the point where I think I want to start playing with some of the, uh, you're the voice stuff. Mm. Um, I've played with it a little bit, but I haven't, I haven't actually like jumped in with both feet, but I think, I think I do want to start doing those kind of things. Um maybe replacing things like my Amazon Echo and doing those kind of things. Um, I don't know if I'm that far in yet, but, or, or what that's going to entail. Um, but that, that's why I'm excited for the, for the chapter three to see what, uh, what you're the voice chapter three has to hold um, in, in terms of that. Right. So I think uh, I, I'd, I'd love to see, yeah, more of that kind of stuff. And then more of like the kind of the use case that we talked about, right. That you initially talked about saying, Hey, like, you know, I can, we can ask it something, it can go in, return something from that service and then run that through another service, potentially like chat GPT or whatever. Yep. Yep. Right. Um, and then from there do whatever else. Right. So, so it's more of a, I can actually start replacing these. So right now the problem is with, with the home assistant voice, I have no way of being like, Hey, what's the weather today in Paris, France. Right. Um, there, yep. Whereas with, with Amazon Echo or Google Homes or stuff like that, I can do that because it is internet connected. It is able to talk to whatever, right? And query whatever services. So with this, potentially I can start doing that now because I can start doing things like, like you said, like returning uh, returning uh, values in directly and do it simply. Not to say that I can't do it today. It's just that'll be like four or five steps instead of one, right? 
I guess, yeah, now, yeah, now the issue you've got though is like, yes, you could call a, as long as you know that you want to get the weather from Paris, France, that's fine. I don't think you could create like that, you know, change that to Sydney, Australia tomorrow, right? I think you're still going to need like a lot of updates to um, the voice stuff still. The return stuff um, that is here today would allow you to at least, uh, Put a, a script that says, "All right, call yeah. you know weather dot com um, for Paris, France, and and and, re- and return that back to your automation or whatever exactly. uh, you've got, and then push it to wherever you need to." Exactly. So, so the the rest of those pieces now can come in with like again, like you send something out to ChatGPT, it returns you like, "Hey, what are the coordinates of Paris, France?" As an example, right? It comes back, and then that's, that's something true. you can push push into. Um into like whatever weather service or whatever that yep. you're querying, right? Whatever API. So I, again, my, I guess maybe I misspoke a little bit when I said, you know, I can do it in one call or two. So maybe it's not one or two, maybe it's like a couple rather than, you know, seven, eight different steps, right? Ping ponging back and forth. Do you go yep. now ask you, now go ask this, now go figure that out. So I think, I think that's where it becomes a lot easier. And even things like, again, uh, there, there's other services too, right? Not just ChatGPT. It could be even Bard as an example, right? Like where it is internet connected and can pull more live data and stuff like that, right? Um, I know it didn't really get the best rap after some of this, their demos and stuff, but I mean, other other than that, like, or, or whatever other service, right? It doesn't have to be one of those two too. So I think it's just, I think it just makes it a little bit easier when you're able to go pull in some of those pieces there. That's true. Because so I guess if, you, if you're using the Home Assistant Assist, I wonder, I haven't played with it yet properly, but I wonder, you know, if you, you know, type in, you know, what is the weather in Sydney, Australia? And yeah. it shoots off, you know, a call to ChatGPT. I wonder if the response back, you can then say, okay, Sydney, Australia has these coordinates. You can, with these return values, maybe not in this release, maybe in the future, this is where we're sort of heading. You can say, okay, uh, the response value had this location. All right, I'm going to take that location, pump it over through this script, which we'll call a weather API, return that data back, and then return yeah. this to your notification system. Like that's where Again, we can This is an of- example. I'm sure there's weather APIs out there where I can just say Sydney, Australia, and it'll go out and <laughs> give me the weather for Sydney, right? Like it's, yeah. Just just as an example of like some of the things you may be able to do, but even even from a home, assi- a home assistant assist perspective, right? Like, you know, you have, let's say you're a little M5 stack, you push the button and you say, okay, get me the weather for, for again, my previous example, Paris, France, right? It can go in and then, and then bring that, bring the result back in, in that same service, right? And then based on that, I can do something else. So it just makes it a little more efficient. Can I do this today? Probably, right? You can probably do it easy today, but it just makes it a little easier, right? Having and a little more efficient, right? So the way I look at it is if that's one less sensor, if that's one less anything like that, that's that much more efficient on my system. So to support all this, you know, return data, it's not available in all services. I think they've only enabled it, you know, for example, like the calendar um, yeah. conversation uh integration enables it and any scripts that you have custom built, they will be supporting uh, return values. Home Assistant internally, there are three types of responses that all services uh, can be, are expected to uh, adhere to. That is that they will always have a response. So they will always return something. They sometimes have response. So for example, calling a weather service for the weather services offline, maybe it won't return any data and it never has a response. Currently, every integration in Home Assistant, bar the calendar, conversation, and any scripts, will be set to um, never has a response. Um, and then, as they slowly, in future releases, they'll you know enable responses for the light domain, the switch domain. Um, they'll be able to you'll be able to know. Okay, yes, has a response, um, and do this. So yeah, I can, I can even see things like, for example. Um, one of the frustrating things I find at the moment is if I turn a light on on for whatever reason, and uh, the home is new, I will actually turn if it fails because maybe the Z wave network's down or the ZB6 you know not working. Home misses the UI will vibrate my phone. You know, think, no, nope, there's an error. Couldn't send that data. But there's no way for me to know that that light switch 
that like light hasn't come on from an automation perspective. So if I walk into a room, I'm not looking at the home assistant UI. I don't know yeah. that that service call failed. In the future, home assistant return value should be able to say, okay, you just called the light turn on service. I re- returning false. Um, I, that didn't work. There was an error. I can then have an automation to say, okay, uh, send an alert to Phil's phone to say, we just tried to turn the light on in the hallway. It didn't work. Now you need to, something's yeah. wrong. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there's, that would be a, a fantastic use case. Um, or yeah. even I can then automate my troubleshooting and go, okay, the light didn't turn on in the hallway. Is the Z-Wave network down? Yes, no, okay. If it is, maybe reboot the Docker container that's running Z-Wave JS. Um, yeah. A whole bunch of um, stuff this opens up for.